Visit Shara from Woodshop Diaries and today I want to show you how I built this really cool modern record shelf and how you can too from just a single sheet of three quarter inch plywood. So if you're ready to get building, let's go. So it seems that record albums are trending again. Honestly, I wish CDs would make a comeback, but I won't hold my breath. Anyway, a friend of mine has a large collection of records and he asked me to make something unique to both store and display some of his favorites. You could also use this for books, pictures, or anything else that you may need a unique shelf for. As a fun fact, I don't actually have any records myself, so I had to borrow some from a friend to take these pictures with, and he happened to have the Grease record. Grease is my all-time favorite, so I was super excited. But anyway, I'm sharing the complete plans, dimensions, and cut diagrams over on my website if you want to build your own. I've linked the plans in the description, but I'll show you how it came together in this video. With a little creative cutting, you can make this entire shelf from just a single sheet of three quarter inch plywood. I've got the complete cut diagram linked below, but to fit everything from one sheet, I ripped a strip off the side about 12 inches wide to cut three shelves and the base plate from. Then I cross cut a 26 and a quarter inch section off the sheet to rip three 12 inch wide strips from. Then I cut out this little piece here for the last shelf piece. The remainder of the sheet can be set aside to cut the back panel from later. I trimmed the 12 inch wide strip down on the miter saw to the exact lengths that I needed. And once I had two 12 and three quarter inch long shelf pieces, four 26 and a quarter inch long shelf pieces, one base plate and one 27 inch shelf piece, I laid them out on my workbench. I tried to visualize the finished project and tried to mark out which edges of which pieces will be exposed so that I could go ahead and edge band those sides. I applied iron on edge banding along those edges of the plywood pieces and then sanded everything smooth. I had a couple of thoughts on what I was going to do for this to join all the boards together. Um, I don't just want to use only screws because I don't want you to see the screw heads because they will be exposed and I think it'll be kind of noticeable in the finished project. Um, I don't want to use pocket holes for the same reason. I can plug the pocket holes, but I think it'll be noticeable because they are like very exposed in the project. I think I'm going to use some two inch wood screws so I can use some wood glue with that and screw these in just a little deeper than the surface and then like countersink and use these birch dowels. These are just like regular dowels for like dowel joinery. And I'm pretty sure they're birch. I'm pretty sure that's what Amazon said when I ordered them. I don't really remember, but they look pretty close. So we're just gonna use these and stick into the countersink hole and then I can just flush cut those and sand it off. And hopefully it'll blend in a little bit better than like just seeing the screw heads or like pocket holes or something. Of course, I could use like dados for this. Um, not gonna do that. There's a couple of options that you could do with this. Honestly, I was going to just use wood dowels, but I don't think these wood dowels are long enough and I don't have time to like go get others. So we're just gonna use these for plugs and use these for joining. I grabbed some drill bits to pre-drill the screw holes, some wood glue, and a 3 8 inch Forstner bit to countersink holes for the 3 8 inch dowel plugs. The bottom shelf has a short piece on the right edge and a long shelf piece at the middle. Since it has this additional shelf piece on the end that the other shelves don't have, this piece needed to be 3 quarter inch longer to keep all of the shelf openings the same. This bottom piece is 27 inch long and the rest are 26 and a quarter. I use wood glue and 2 inch wood screws to secure the short shelf piece in place. I just used a speed square to make sure that all of my pieces stayed square while assembling. I pre-drilled a pilot hole for the screw first, and then I used the Forstner bit to drill out a hole about a quarter inch deep to insert the dowel plug later. Then I drove the screw in place. You'll notice that for these first two holes, I swapped the bits out in the same drill. I used the second short shelf piece as a spacer block to space the rest of the shelves on this project 12 and 3 quarter inches apart. I just clamped it in place and lined the next shelf up with it. I continued this process of using wood glue and 2 inch wood screws to assemble the rest of the shelves. 
After those first two holes though, I got smart and grabbed a second drill so that I wouldn't have to keep swapping between the pilot hole bit and the Forstner bit anymore. After attaching these first two shelves, I glued in the dowels so that they could dry while I assembled the rest of the shelves. And on that note, I do recommend doing as I say and not as I do and allow plenty of time for the glue to dry before attempting to flush cut these. I attached one more shelf, then got impatient and started cutting. And you can see what happened. I glued in the dowels as I went and I came back later to trim them all down. I used an oscillating saw as you can see, but you could also use a flush cut hand saw or whatever else you prefer to trim these down with. I worked my way through the shelves using the short shelf to evenly space everything and my speed square to ensure that everything stayed square as they were attached. And when I got to the end, I had to attach this short piece so I couldn't use it as a spacer anymore. So in this case, I just measured and marked instead. Once the entire shelf section was together, I placed the remaining plywood sheet on my workbench and laid the shelf assembly on top. I lined up the bottom corner and the left side against the edge of the sheet and checked that it was straight and square. Then I traced out where it needed to be cut for the back panel. I used a straight edge and a speed square to help me make sure that the back squares stayed square and didn't get off in my tracing. Now, one note about what I did here, you'll notice that I lined up the bottom edge of the shelf with the bottom edge of the plywood. I actually meant to leave a three quarter inch space between that so that when I add the bottom plate of the shelf later, it would be under the shelf and butt up to the back panel. But I forgot to leave that extra three quarter inch length on this back panel. You'll see later what I did about that, but just an FYI, this was a mistake on my part. Once I had the back panel traced out, I used my circular saw to rip the excess off the right side so that I can just use that piece for scrap later. And then I used my AccuCut and circular saw to cut along all the lines. I cut right along the lines on the top side and then came back with a jigsaw to finish the cuts along the corners. You could make all of these cuts with a jigsaw if you wanted, but I was afraid that my lines wouldn't be straight if I did that. Once the back panel was cut, I puttied over all the plywood edges. You could definitely edge band this if you wanted, but I was running low on edge bending and since this was going to be painted, the putty worked fine. While that dried, I finished the shelf and prepared it for stain. So here are the dowels after they were flush cut and sanded smooth. They're a little different color than the plywood, which when I stain it a dark color, you may not even notice. I don't know, but we'll see. Um, had a slight mishap on this one, cut a little into the plywood, but I think it'll blend in once we get it stained. I stained the shelf section, then sanded and primed the back panel. Priming and painting are the worst, so I always kind of hate this entire process. And just in case you didn't know, if you run out of paint trays and don't want to run to town for any, a trash bag works fine. I feel like me not wanting to run to town for like $1 items in the middle of a project has become a common theme lately. I don't know if anybody else has noticed, but it's happened several times in the past couple videos. Anyway, once the primer was dry, I followed up with paint. And then I flipped the shelf over and installed this back panel onto the back side. I used two inch wood screws here and when I was finished, I went back and painted over the whole back side of this as well. And it wasn't until now that I realized that I had cut the back panel shorter than I intended. 
Okay, so I made a mistake and I'm gonna tell you about it so that you don't make the same mistake. I actually have this um, in the plans the way that it's supposed to be. I just, in my mind, I wasn't thinking when I cut this back piece. I intended for this back piece to extend down past this V right here, three quarter of an inch. So that way I could set this base plate under the V and it would come out flush and then it would butt right up against the back panel. What I didn't do is remember to cut this back piece three quarter inch further down than the V. So when I laid this out and traced it, I set the V directly on the bottom edge of this back panel. So now when I put this base plate on here, I have to extend this base plate all the way to the back edge of this back panel, which means that it doesn't come out flush to this V right here, which I mean, it's not really a big deal and I don't think that it looks bad. It's just not what I intended to do and I honestly do not want to have to waste this piece and cut another piece of plywood. So we're just going to leave it as is. This wasn't a huge deal and the extra dimension kind of looks intentional. So we can just pretend that that was part of the design. But I installed the bottom panel onto the shelf using two inch wood screws up into the back panel and then I used a couple of one and a quarter inch screws to secure it to the V at the bottom of the shelf. I gave this entire piece a couple of coats of poly and then it was complete. As usual, the two-tone finish was kind of a pain, but it was worth it for this end result. It fits record albums perfectly, but again, you can also use this for books or whatever else you want to display. If you do want to build your own, I've got the free plans linked in the description. And if you enjoyed this project, I'd love if you'd subscribe so you don't miss out on what's coming next. Thanks so much for watching friends and until next time, happy building.